Okay, new year, fresh start, fresh wine. I am entering um, wet January, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Anyway, I uh, would like to introduce you someone quite special today and maybe not necessarily someone that you know, uh, a wine that you know, maybe you've never even had it. Even better, because it's always great to start your wine year with something new. We're going to talk, what? We're going to talk about aligoté today and I'm going to sip aligoté and maybe you're sipping along. If you are, drop me a comment, let me know because this is a quite a rare experience, I would say. All right, aligoté. It is a white grape variety, just like Chardonnay or Sauvignon Blanc or Chenin or Riesling. White grape variety, very easy. You usually make still white wine out of aligoté. However, there are also some excellent examples of sparkling wine, namely Crémo, Crémo de Bourgogne, which is a, an, equi an equivalent of a champagne, so made in a tr usually using Méthode Champenois, so traditional uh, method of making sparkling wine. Mm, but it is called Camo de Bourgogne because you make it in Burgundy. Not many people know, but Aligoté is actually part of all of that bubbly fun. I bet even if you take a bottle of Cremant, turn to the back label and you are, well, I give you like a 60% chance that you're going to see Aligoté grey variety on it. This grey variety is also used to make a quite a famous aperitif drink, Kir. So what you do, you take a large wine glass, you put a little bit of cassis, in here, or the liqueur, um, cassis, or crème de cassis, and you fill it up until probably like here with aligoté, and that's the drink that is called kia. Just like this nice, refreshing apéro uh, drink for somebody who wants to um, have something refreshing. I'm, I feel like I'm going to say refreshing a lot, but hopefully some synonyms are gonna pop up in my head. <laughs> but yeah, this is why we love aligoté, because it is refreshing. <laughs> Or in other words, it has quite high acidity. It's also like really crisp. And what I specifically love about it is that this has a it has a very delicate herbaceous note. All right, so Aligoté is basically planted uh, or grows predominantly in France, although you can probably find other examples somewhere in other old world countries. And also curiously, Aligoté is also a big part of plantations, of wine plantations in Eastern Europe. So places like Ukraine, um, Georgia, Romania, Moldova, they all grow Aligoté grey variety. It's actually small, in most of those places, Aligoté is the main white grey variety. But the most prestigious place that grows Aligoté is Burgundy. There's this one particular village in Burgundy, in the subregion of Burgundy, Côte Chardonnay, and that village is called Bouzeron. And if you are drinking Bouzeron, you're drinking the best of the best of Aligotés. This is kind of like, this is, this is it. This is, this is your top shelf Aligoté. And just honestly, mark my words, because I think that this appellation is going to spike in popularity in the next years. Côte is 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 quite in the south of Burgundy, so you can imagine that the weather there will be quite warm and Chardonnay is slowly losing popularity there. And a lot of people are turning more and more to Aligoté in search of freshness. <laughs> what is a synonym of freshness? I don't know. I... Anyway, to sum up, if you are looking at the label of your Burgundy wine and it says Bouzeron, you know I am going to drink or buy or enjoy or skip 100% Aligoté. But really, it is considered like grey variety number three in Burgundy. So it's got a, um, a bronze medal. About 6% of all of the vines in Burgundy, uh, vineyards in Burgundy are planted with Aligoté. So it's really like the third, solid third most important grey variety in Burgundy. Some critics have, have written that Aligoté is considered to be a beneficiary of climate change. And that is because it still sustains its freshness. <laughs> it ripens a little earlier and uh, it gives you this, you know, lovely <laughs> freshness. I can't, I desperately need new synonyms. They're coming, I promise, I'm going to research. So most of the winemakers actually want to support this vivacious slow <laughs> aligoté and this freshness. So they would age the uh, Aligoté grey variety in stainless steel tanks and sometimes in those concrete um, egg shape 
uh, vats as well because this would not mask this would not give those slightly heavier slightly more complex aromas and it's going to preserve this cleanness cleanliness cleanness um this lean uh, style of uh, our aligoté but actually I've had some excellent examples of Aligoté wines that were aged in oak barrels. Just last year, the estate that I work for, Chateau de Beaumar, have introduced, has introduced to its portfolio Aligoté, which was aged in oak barrels. Not for a long time, so not too extensive. I think it was maybe six months tops in used oak barrels. So the influence of the oak is not as severe. <laughs> Um, but it was a great wine. I really loved it. I was actually really, really surprised. It offered me exactly what I wanted. You know, that, that lovely kind of summer feeling where I want to drink something light and refreshing, but at the same time, I don't want to, I don't want it to really bite me and to be too, you know, too ah, nervous on my, on my palate. And that's exactly what Aligoté um, aged in oak barrels offered me. So actually it turns out that this one, this particular Arigote that I have is also aged in oak barrels. So I'm really excited to, to see what it has to offer. Let's give it a swirly swirly. Nice, you see the color is really nice. Just your classical light lemon color. <sighs> I mean, what is not to love here? What a great year to kick off 2023. What a great wine to kick off 2023. I mean, really. Hmm. Mm. Right away, something very citrusy, something very grassy. You know, remember that I mentioned that herbaceous character? So think of lime, lemon, something else a little nervy, you know, this kind of like whoosh. Mm. Definitely very vigorous already in the nose, even. <sighs> Just super refreshing, <laughs> you guys. It gives you, it gives you this breezy um, feeling on the nose. Mm. Okay, green apple, just a very light steely touch. Wow, this beautiful citrusy muscle, just tireless acidity. If you stay away from this wine, if you do not like acidic wine. Me, huge fan, huge. Mm. I love it, it gives you, the acidity gives you a little, if it's well done, it's not too nervous, it's not too bitey on your palate, it gives you this lovely ooh, little sparkle and it makes you wake up a little bit. Oh, lovely. This particular one, I think it's like 11 euros or something, maybe even cheaper than that, so it's really a bargain. Honestly, well done. Well done, the Mente Vino Le Brun. 2019, also super fresh year. It's called La Pièce, probably. So Pièce uh, from in Burgundian refers to a small barrel, which is slightly bigger than the classical um, Bordeaux barrel, which is 225 liters. The Burgundian is 228 and it's called Pièce Bourguignon. So I guess this is what it refers to. You know what would be an excellent option here for just like a dinner, just like a, a last minute dinner? Go to a go to your cheese shop or even a supermarket, get like five different ch goat cheeses, open a bottle of aligoté and honey, dinner is served. <laughs> I'm just even kind of craving that right now. Hmm. Lovely grassiness, a bit of chamomile tea, you know, that some fresh green grass, a bit of cut hay. Here too, a lovely, beautiful wine. I'm happy to open up with a lovely aligoté. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed this episode. Hit that like button, support my channel, and I will see you very soon. And I already know what I'm going to serve you next. It is going to be gamme. But like really Beaujolais, like crazy stuff, crazy good stuff. Stuff that I know that I've tried that surprised me, that blew my mind completely. So I hope you're excited for that too. Bye-bye, <sighs> my wonderful person.